Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Tomb of Heroes, a very familiar map, watching God vs. Cybernetic Pony. So, Cybernetic Pony is starting out... I'm sorry, God's starting out on the west side of the... Sorry, east side of the map. Cybernetic Pony starting on the west side of the map. Getting my directions confused there. Cybernetic Pony starting out as CISO, while God is going for... What is he going for? Grekum! There we go. And neither player really revealing their build quite yet. Probably going to be economy focused because economy is just what you do on this map. So I'm point going for a very quick importer, surprisingly. And actually going very quickly to attack with his infantry. I'm not sure why. Because a map this big does not have a rush distance that is particularly amenable to that. But it looks like God is going for a similar strategy. In fact, God appears to be going for a proxy. Getting his Sebi Faro pair over to the south side of Cybernetic Pony's base, or at least was. There we go. There's the order there. Might echo that out, but I'm not sure that's a really odd way of starting out. And then switching over to Vec Gear. So God appears to be... I'm not sure if that race switch is permanent, but it looks like it probably is. So, an odd start up there. I guess he figures that... Oh, I see. He figures that Summer Pony will see the rush, the proxy coming in and try to prepare for that before Vec Gear comes in and changes things up. Summer Pony was actually mentioning that the Cecil versus Grekum game and the Cecil versus Vecchier game is quite opposite. Where Cecil versus Vecchier, I believe you want to be more defensive. No. Yeah, I think you want to be more defensive, whereas Cecil versus Grekum, you want to be more, more aggressive. I believe that's what he was saying. It might be the exact opposite, but the point is, is that you have to do the opposite thing for each race. So, switching between Grekum and Vecchier is very difficult for Cecil to deal with. While God is going for more of an economy game, he is moving forward a bit with his Shinvir, Tethvir, just for scouting, not for for proxy much. Probably not for harassment much either. Cybernetic so Pony's still moving out with his inventory. Not aware at this point that he's going for a second importer. He is going for something aggressive here. I guess I was right about the Grekum and Vecchier thing, because at this point, Cybernetic Pony believes that God is playing as... Oh no, Cybernetic Pony might actually see that God is playing as Vecchier. He hasn't jumped forward yet. I don't know if he's seen the damage yet and jump forward and check that out, but he does... No, no, he thinks that it's Grekum. He's moving his units into a position to take advantage of the whole Sim base idea. So he does think that God is still playing Grekum. And he's going for a massive infantry rush against that, so I... Actually, I guess defensive against Grekum was what it was then. If he is doing this. But it doesn't matter, because God is not going for Grekum. God is going for Vekir. And Cybernetic Pony is none the wiser at this point. Though it looks like at the four and a half minute mark... That God will be dealing some damage, and also at the three and a half minute mark, God is actually going to be hitting directly. And Cybernetic Pony has not quite checked this out. God is moving around the timeline a lot for this, and I think God switching back to—is he switching back to Grekum? No, he can't actually. It's in the unplayable password. No, he is. He is in fact doing exactly that, switching back to Grekum. So completely confusing, Cybernetic Pony. Though Cybernetic Pony keeps with this strategy, I think this will work. I think this is meant to be his anti Grekum build, not his anti Vekir build. Just given how much he keeps his infantry between buildings, I imagine that's Grekum that he's anticipating fighting against. And this is the last switch, too, so God is going to be committing to Grekum. He is not going to be going for Vekir. The Vekir is the feint, not the Grekum. Which makes it a little bit odd that he decided to go Grekum, then Vekir, then Grekum. I would think he'd have gone for, like, CISO than Vecchio than Grekum or something like that in order to completely catch Cybernetic Pony off guard. But now Cybernetic Pony does think that God is going for Vecchio and will be switching up a strategy once again, I would imagine. At which point switching back once he sees that God is in fact not going for Vecchio once again. He is in fact going for Grekum, but right now he does suspect Vecchio and that is wrong. Though God appears to be actually fairly committed. He did have quite a bit built up here. He is getting a foundation and also he is playing this. He's playing this as if he's actually playing Vekir. Despite the fact that he's not going to be playing Vekir for very long, he is still playing this the same way. Now, Cybernetic Pony will have to deal with God as this comes in, and the proxy is still going, so God's old orders, very clever. I mean, this is, of course, what you'd expect, but God's old orders still going through. Didn't even have to change that up, didn't even have to add any more orders to that. Just building up that proxy, and Cybernetic Pony is none the wiser once his units get into progen mode and start building up while. Well, Cybernetic Pony completely expects the Vecchio attack. Now, when is God actually going to do this? He should be doing this soon because I don't see it now. 
And really, the sooner the better. Any longer he waits... Actually, well, okay, not the sooner, necessarily. The sooner, chronally, closer to the Impalable Past, further in the past, yes. Which is probably what God is waiting for, is waiting for the Impalable Past Edge to come near. And there we go. Now he's in progen mode at the 257 mark. About a minute up from the Impalable Past Edge, and will be building up more Octos. There we go. This is going to be... Very interesting. One resource processor in the main base. That is providing all the resources he needs to get more and more Octos. Once the Impalable Past Edge comes along, he will be going for a very powerful attack. But Cybernetic Pony was somewhat prepared. He did have some units in there as a sim base. And I don't think he's going to be preparing well enough. I think God is going to be... Well, actually, no. He is in a good position. He does have units nicely set up. He is still building as if he was against Grekum. And that's going to pay off. Or at least probably going to pay off. going to keep one Reign alive for, any, for some length of time, at least. And God not going for an attack. Very wisely staying back. He does have the time when to attack bookmarked. So once the timeline starts moving... Well, actually, not even when the timeline starts moving. It's The Impilable Past is going to catch up by the time the present hits the stopping point and the timeline starts moving. So I guess right in the first place, he will be jumping back to that point and setting up his attack. While at the 5... Or maybe not. No, God jumping back to that point, 307 mark, when the Octos are built up. And is he going for an attack? I think he is. Looks like he has lifted up his units. He is preparing for it. This is the proxy preparation. And he's going in for it. 347 mark, but it will take time for the next time to come along. And Cybernetic Pony does see that God did switch over to Grekum. And he definitely sees that a proxy is underway. He knows what's going on. He knows what's up. And will be setting up his defenses to account for this. He does have a mech in place. Not great if there's no air units coming in, but still, that's what he has. What he does need to get, however... Oh, Macrofab, interesting. Very early Macrofab, a good idea. He needs to get Martanks for this. Not this specific defense, but just in general against... Well, Frigus and Martanks are a great option against Grekum. But will he need to get his, I guess, ATHCs? No, I don't even know. I mean, the infantry sim basing would be really the best bet against all these Octos coming in. And this blue time of coming along, this is when the attack comes in. The mech going down very quickly. The mech fab is being built up. It shouldn't go down. The marines doing what they can. One auto down. One marine down. More marines going down. Not taking advantage of the base layout. And God able to deal a ton of damage to Cybernetic Pony's base. And Cybernetic Pony does have a massive attack going towards God's base as well. So both players will be base switching from this point. They cannot get there. And Crown Hammer suggests that the mech fab was ordered for Vekir. And that's... That's not surprising, but really, Macrofab is just that powerful. I mean, it does have it does have the Mar Tank, and that's huge. Mar Tank is a very powerful unit, and it looks like Cybernetic Pony is losing his base. God will be losing his as well. Nothing in place to build that up, so both players will be essentially trading everything, and we'll have the game start over at the five-minute mark. Yep, there we go. The Marines coming in, and both players have enough money to rebuild. Though God in a slightly better position, he can actually counterattack, send his Octos all the way back to the other side, and deal with what Cybernetic Pony builds up. Unless Cybernetic Pony is clever and just decides to go south or north and not take advantage of the main base. I don't know if that'd be the wisest thing to do, but it certainly would be something that would be unexpected. It would buy him a bit of time as God rips his base to shreds. While Cybernetic Pony actually doesn't even need to do that, God is moving his Arcticus and his RP, the one RP that he had, away. The Marines trying to deal with the Arcticus as best they can. But I think he's just going to try to rebuild. He's going to go for another base here. Cybernetic Pony at the 5 minute mark. Let's see what he, he is up to. And it looks like he is... No, he's continuing in the main base. No, he's actually going for the attack. He is trying to finish out this Arcticus. Trying to get rid of God's structures. But... No, he's indecisive right now. I mean, it's not a bad idea to get rid of the Arcticus. Because this way it would prevent any rebuilding above him. Because God could just rebuild to the north with the Arcticus. He is rebuilding to the west. He is getting his progen triad up. Building up some RPs. And then from there we'll be able to rebuild himself. And he, so God does have the advantage here. He definitely is ahead in what he can do. And Cybernetic Pony right now does have the money to rebuild. But he's not actually rebuilding. The Arcticus should be going down fairly soon. God still has the resource processor here. And the resource processor is the important thing. That is the thing that needs to not die. And Cybernetic Pony... No, it looks like ultimately he is going a bit south. He does have a marine to get rid of the Arcticus, but mostly is focused... Well, maybe not. No, it looks like he's changed himself up and has destroyed the Arcticus. So from his point of view, and he is further in the past, so it's more likely to be true. The Arcticus is gone. The resource processor is soon to follow. But still, God does have... Actually, no! He has no resource processors in play. 
Looks like he's just going to try to tear apart everything Cyber 90 Pony has. But this resource processor is the only thing that he has left. And he's put in a position that Cyber 90 Pony is aware of its position. And it is going down. That resource processor is going to die. That is bad. That's really bad. I shouldn't have to emphasize how bad that is because God has no way to get back in this game. The only chance he has is if he just lands this, converts QP to Liquid Crystal, and then rebuilds his main base from here. Because this resource processor is going down. Maybe. Or the alternate option is to go to the center of the map and completely avoid the problem in the first place. And that's exactly what he's going to do. So he can rebuild from there. While Cyber Night Pony is getting at more RPs towards the north side of the map, he is doing exactly the clever thing I mentioned. However, it's not that clever given that God is probably really aware of where Cyber Night Pony has set himself up and will be sending out some units there shortly to deal with it. Or maybe not. Maybe he's actually just... Actually, it looks like he's trying to send auctions around the map just to make sure that he can tell where Saturday Pony might be expanding to. Also a good idea, but really he should rebuild. And he's just waiting until he gets one pull of Liquid Crystal. Once his resistance processor gets in place, slowly but surely flying in, I really do think he should just convert Q-Plasma. Just land it, convert Q-Plasma, lift it off, and go. But he is not doing that, and God, his point of view is way farther in the future, so it's not to worry about right now. But Cybernetic Pony is actually rebuilding. He's getting a bit of an advantage. He does need to get some production structures to actually turn that into a military advantage and ultimately deal with God's base. But God does have a resource disadvantage at this point. He can't rebuild without this resource processor getting in place. And really, if he had lost that resource processor, that would be game. Or, not quite game, but he'd have to win with these units. Granted, he probably could. I mean, he's got a powerful set of units right there. But at this point, Cybernetic Pony is pulling ahead Oh, Crown Hammer pointing out that the resource... Oh, yeah, he's right. The resource processor can do that while closed. So yeah, God just needs to convert liquid crystal, Q Plasma to Liquid Crystal, and he is set. But surprisingly not doing so. I don't know why I thought I had to land first, because I can see the command card right here. But that's just something he's not choosing to do. I guess he's really hoping for, well, that pull of Liquid Crystal that he ultimately got. But still, 11 minutes in the game. Two minutes up from where... From where Cybernetic Pony... Sorry, two minutes down from where Cybernetic Pony is. Cybernetic Pony is the one two minutes up. And God actually still not building an RP from here. Why is he not turning this into an RP? He has the money for it. 38 Liquid Crystal. He can afford it. But he is not. However, a factory is coming up. Cybernetic Pony is pretty much in somewhat of a position. He still needs one or two more resource processors to be pure, perfectly secure, but he could build a couple of ATHCs just to hold the fort. And here we go, another resource processor being built up. And Cybernetic Pony is... Definitely ahead, however, God. Now getting another resource processor. He is now starting to rebuild his economy. Seriously going for that. That is going to be considerably more effective than just hanging around with his units and doing nothing, twiddling his thumbs, waiting for this thing to get money in the bank. Now, Cybernetic Pony going for Lancers. I don't know why I keep thinking he's going to go for ATHCs. It's the normal thing CISO player goes for, but Cybernetic Pony is not really a normal CISO player. Or at least he's defining the new normal from the looks of it. And the new normal involves Lancers. Against the amount of Octos that are coming in, that really is the better idea. It's just, most players would have a habit go for ATHCs, and that Octo scouting out, dying, but getting what God needed, which is information. That's all God wanted from that Octo. He did not care if it lived or died, although admittedly if it did some damage, that'd be really nice. But, the point is, he knows now where Cyber 90 Pony is set up, and Cyber 90 Pony can't quickly migrate from here. He's stuck. He's here. This is where he's... That's where he is, and that's where he's going to be fighting everything from here. Lancer, however, going to try to deal with this RP and going to be successful in doing so. Will take a little while, though. Lancers, like I said before, don't have great anti-ground attack. And there's an ATC coming up just to make sure the main base not doing anything, just to scout around. Make absolutely sure that God has been cleaned up other than what he knows to be inside his old main base. So God, building up in that main base, not building up any other buildings other than RPs, and he can't really afford to do so. With both players... Actually, I'm going to speed this up a bit because this is getting a, bit, a little bit slow. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony seems pretty confident that everything's just in the main base, going towards the center instead, and will be finding exactly what he expects. And the Lancer has gotten rid of the RP in the north, also scanning around the south, and looks like another unit is coming in as well. Another ATHC, so two ATHCs coming in and dealing with damage they can. The Lancer coming in from the north as well, it will be taken out by the Seppi. The Faro will help, but the Seppi is really what's going to stop it. Getting out of the way, and this Octo pushing away the ATHCs to attack. So both players are fully aware of where their opponents are and what they have set up. 
nothing's a mystery anymore, and jumping forward to the 1427 mark, God is moving forward and finding and fighting the ATC, able to take it out, but losing the Octo in the process. Two more Octos are in place to stop anything coming out, to intercept everything coming in, and probably going to be going for an attack from there. Now, Cyber Pony, the 1403 mark, through, to, a minute up from where we were, he's continuing to build up his old build. He does have the Lancer attacking to the north. He does have that resource processor being destroyed. And he does have the Octo fight that we saw went in the Octo's favor. Now, God, he is now focused heavily on economy. He is building everything for economy, getting a lot of RPs. All of his Octos turning into resource processors, except for the ones that he sent out just to scout out, making sure he knows what's up. But still at least three of them being sent to RPs and a few more being built up for RPs. So God definitely focused once again on the economy game. And at this point, he is growing a bit faster than Cybernetic Pony is. Cybernetic Pony having switched over to military possibly a bit too soon, being that he's not harassing with it. If he went, if he went back, went around with the Lancer from the south and took out these RPs, that might actually make it pay off. But otherwise, he is on the back foot, building a mech and probably building, well, hopefully not building a macrofab. At this point, he can't afford it. 9 LC, 20 QP, nowhere near enough, but he is getting a bunch of QP. So he might be going for that. That could be his plan. Bit of an odd choice, though. I think at this point, God is... Yeah, shouldn't say I think. God is definitely getting back in this game. He is getting an advantage. The Lancer is putting itself in place to harass and doing what it can, getting some damage on that Seppi, but it won't be very much. He needs to do that very near the Impalable Past edge, and that way God wouldn't be able to stop it, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. No, instead, Cybernetic Pony is avoiding the main base completely, just going to the side expansions, making sure that no Octos have set up and spread out. Which they haven't. God's just going very much for a centralized base. He does have another Seppi, however, for defense. Possibly for a reef. Probably for a reef. But it is handy to have for defense as well in the meantime. And more RP is being built up. So God has taken the lead in economy very strongly. Very convincingly. Cybernetic Pony needs to build up a couple more RPs. And he does not have the Liquid Crystal to do so. And he's not got the Liquid Crystal income to do so. Having switched over to Q-Plasma, probably to build more Lancers. Though, why he built that mech is still a beyond me. He might have just intended that for anti-air defense. Having seen that God is not spread out, looks like he's going for the main base. The Cybernetic Pony is going to try to harass that. At this point, it's too late. The Octopod defense being built up. 16 minute mark. Only 12 minutes later than usual. But given the way this game is gone, that's not at all surprising. Why is Cybernetic Pony not building more RPs? That's actually kind of surprising. He's focusing way too much on his military and not really focusing on military that's going to help out. Getting yet another Lancer, he needs to focus on RPs. He's well behind on economy. He's got half the economy God has and falling behind even faster. So at this point, God's got all the defense he needs. He has the economy built up nicely. He has, well, a slight air disadvantage, I guess, but the Octopods will be able to take care of the Lancers well enough. Well, if he builds more than one. One Octopod will have a slightly hard time, but the Seppies. That'll cover it. The Octopod will just tank, and the Seppies will take care of the Lancers, no problem. So Cybernetic Pony is falling back by unwise expenditure. Now, if he, like I said, if he really went for a powerful attack with these five Lancers, I think at this timing he might actually pull it off. Advanced Structures is being researched. God not going for a lot of production, and if he does it next to the level past Edge, I think Cybernetic Pony can take this. I think he can at least deal enough damage to make it worthwhile, to make it have been worth going for mass lancers instead of mass economy. Though even then, when God is, he's got so much liquid crystal in the bank, I don't know if it'll matter. He'd be able to rebuild his base in a few seconds if he had to. But the lancers aren't going for an attack. Cybernetic Pony at the Unplayable Past Edge. This is the only time he has to go for the attack, and I don't see him going for it. Though he might just, he has the Q Plasma, no, sorry, he has the Chrono Energy to go for another Q Plasma. That's not relevant yet, he does not have Gate Tech. But he has the Chrono Energy, and that is what's relevant. So, with everything... There we go, that's what I was looking for. He should jump away from this, though. He needs to move his time, his player line away from this so that it doesn't propagate. But he's not doing so, so God is going to be fully aware of this attack. He's going to have time to prepare and to deal with it. Cybernetic Pony should have jumped away to avoid that propagation. That was a mistake. I don't think it's going to cost him too much, but it was a mistake. God able to go back, able to lift off the Seppi and will be able to defend. Actually, I think it will cost him the attack, given that the Seppies are off the ground. That was unfortunate. Cybernetic Pony losing this attack, 
It was a nicely timed attack. It would have been perfect if he had let it go into the Impaled Past. If he had just let the Time Wave grab it instead of going in himself and watching it as it went in. Regardless, he still had to get rid of the Octopod, but his main targets were those resource processors. He needed to get rid of these, and he did not do so. Only getting rid of an Octopod. That was unfortunate. And I'm also noticing the Seppies have splash damage, and no, that's not stupid. Anti-air is, is weak in this game, given how well air can move around, how easily they can move around and undo things. Having splash on anti-air is absolutely necessary to get rid of air effectively. It's really scary. If you have, I mean, it hasn't happened in about a year now, thankfully. But back when mass airplay was the thing to do, having anti-air splash was about the only thing you could have used, and even then, that never came up just because it was usually Seppi Legos, and they were so fast you couldn't deal with them. And the units that you'd have that have splash, like Tethy or Seppi, and I think Mech has splash, those would not have been enough. I mean, they would have been enough if the units came in and got themselves killed, but they never let themselves get themselves killed. And yeah, hitting air at all if it's moving requires splash. It's just... It's necessary. But also against groups is necessary. Hitting, Getting rid of air groups is hard. Air crowd control is entirely focused on the low level, on the infantry. It's not something that's easy to do, so that's why splash is there. It's not stupid. It's, it's completely necessary. Now, if it's stupid because of other game design considerations that force it to be happening then, that's a different argument. But given the way the game is currently designed, it makes perfect sense. That aside, God has chronoporting now. Machinery being researched for Cybernetic Pony at the same time, but Cybernetic Pony not having gate tech at this point, that is a major fallback. He, or not fallback, he has no fallback. That's the problem. He has no way of getting out of this. He's stuck in this corner on the north side of the map and has no way out of here other than machinery, which he's probably going to use for tornadoes or tanks, but God has chronoporting. God can basically well, do his famous permacloning tactics. I mean, he... Well, not just him, but he's the only one who really uses it as extensively. So I expect to see him start chronoporting back to the Impelable Past Edge and doing his standard jump forward, stop propagation, and then stop chronoporting after it happens. It's, it's a pretty scary tactic, and it's quite effective, too. That's... That's how this game's gonna go. Cybernetic Pony really doesn't have much of a chance unless he... Well, I mean, he kind of squandered the attack he had... Oh, Crown Emerald's pointing out in chat that Cybernetic Pony has a tendency to call things he doesn't like stupid. So it's not so much a matter of criticizing the game design as simply being frustrated at the fact that his attack did not pan out. And I can see that frustration. It's definitely frustrating. It's just that... Yeah, it's frustrating because it's a simple mistake. Just a matter of if he jumped away and let the attack propagate by the time wave, he would not have lost. He would have been fine. But God going in there and getting a Chronoport departure in there. Cybernetic Pony going to have to deal with this, and that's going to be fairly powerful. The Seppi Pod, actually, in the playable past, not sure if he's trying to do a permaclone from here, or if he's just trying to do a really quick self-reinforcing attack. I don't know. Self-reinforcing attacks are actually fairly rare, unless the player is already winning and the units happen to be in position, but moving in position to then Chronoport is a rare thing to do. I expect this is just part of a permaclone tactic and setup. Now, Cybernetic Pony is starting to expand out towards where God used to be. Getting that east side of the map. Amusingly, yes, I did mess up at the start of the game and mentioned that Cybernetic Pony was the east side of the map and not the west side, and well, it turns out I was right, ultimately. Took a little bit of base trading, but it worked out. I called it somehow. But what I can't seem to call is what God is trying to do with this. I think he is going for Permaclone. I think he is just doing it in a rather roundabout way rather than doing the direct way he had done before. I guess he figures it'll be more reliable or harder to disrupt. Let's see, he's chronoported back here. Looks like he's canceled out the first set of chronoports and has some re chronoports going in. Yeah, it looks like I see what he's doing. He's got the chronoports coming in. And they're just far away enough that the propagation. No, it's just hard to explain. Never mind. Looks like he's trying to get the. The chronoport's happening from the playable pass as close as possible to the edge, and then do a so do a small chronoport, then a large chronoport, and then cancel the first small chronoport, but then jump away from that, and then the time wave gets propagated of the small chronoport canceling, and the small chronoport arrival cancels, at which point the time wave cancels the large chronoport departure, but the large chronoport arrival has already fallen off the timeline. I think that's what he's trying to do. But it looks like he's just going for a standard 
undo when it's way into the unplayable past. Actually, no, it doesn't look like if he was planning on doing that, that was going to succeed. I'm really not sure what he's planning on doing. Let's see, he's just failing to chronoport rather than successfully chronoporting. He has two two chronoport departures are being undone right here. Saturday Pony is just in front, or just behind them. So I realize I'm focusing a lot on the timeline and not a lot on the action, but there really isn't a whole lot going on other than this chronoporting, which is very important. So these chronoport uh, arrivals here, the darker yellow is the arrivals, the transparent yellow is the departures. Looks like some of them will be cancelled. I think the furthest one will be undone by the time wave, but the first two will be fine. Anyway, God is coming into position. No, Chrono Party once again, so he's definitely pushing for this, but the red time wave is actually going to stop all of them. None of the arrivals falling off the timeline. So God has to try that permaclone again. No permacloning for him this time. And at the same time, or not at the same time, further in the future, 26 minute mark, we see that Saturday Night Pony is going for a heavy Tornado Cell. Harassing the Q Plasma. Now, God has so much Q Plasma in the bank, it's not even funny. He has way too much. Actually, he's floating a ton. Especially given that he's focusing on permacloning and getting an Arcticus. How about that? 25 minutes in the game, getting a second Arcticus. And more importantly, getting a ton of Pharapods and Sepipods. More permacloning shenanigans, or at least chronoporting shenanigans going on. But these Tornado is doing a great job just tearing through the base. Unfortunately for him, of course, God has plenty of time. He has the whole timeline, thanks to chronoporting, to deal with this. And God, once again, pushing to Permaclone, and it looks like he's not going to be as successful unless this is an arrival, which I don't think it is. I think that arrival is on a departure that's... I think it's on this departure goes to this arrival. More departures coming through, however, and it looks like God will probably try to undo those and deal with them. Now, this one, Cybernetic Pony, if he goes to attack and actually kills them, it would... No, there's nothing in there to attack. Never mind. They current report back before Cybernetic Pony even can act. I wasn't sure if God was going to try to get Cybernetic Pony to kill his units to cause a permaclone that way. Though, admittedly, that's not a particularly effective permaclone if the units are dead. That's just a standard ontological paradox. I mean, that's... He's not getting free units so much as he's simply keeping the units alive. Which, admittedly, is kind of getting free units. But what you want to do is double your unit count. More than anything else. And he's at least going for, if nothing else, an Echo. Or at least a Re-Chronoport attack, if not permacloning. He's at least going for a re -chronoport Assault, and that's... Well, we'll see when it happens, when it gets down here, and the next time it comes along. God's got a lot of Chronoports spread out along the timeline here. It's because of the map, but it's not the time map, it's the timeline. The time map! Actually, that'd be really cool if there was a way of doing that, but that's beside the point. The point is, God dealing the damage he can, but these units Chronoporting back before they can deal too much damage. And it's more than going to be the Unplayable Pass that's going to cause that damage to come in. But even then, these Tornads are going to deal a lot of damage. Or at least are trying to. The heavy pods can get rid of them in time. And it looks like all the units are gone. It looks like Saturday Pony did not successfully manage to use these tornadoes. The heavy pods too effective a defense, which is not at all surprising. Heavy pods are dedicated anti-air. They're supposed to do this. It's working as intended. And Gate Tech being constructed. Saturday Pony trying to fight Chronoporting with Chronoporting. Of course, all that leaves you with is paradoxes. But paradoxes are part of the game. However, it doesn't even look like paradoxes are going to be a concern. Right now, all is really a concern is the fact that God is dealing a ton of damage with the Pods, tearing apart Cybernetic Pony's base in the Impelable Pass before Cybernetic Pony can even deal with anything. Cybernetic Pony going to try to get Gate Tech, and I think his army will survive long enough, and he had enough money in reserve. The Q Plasma is the only resource that's going to be attacked, and that is safe. He has more than enough to deal with any assaults coming in. However, he needs that for later. Chronoports. That being said, where's this mech? There's his mech. What I meant more is, where's his mech after God is through with him? Because that mech is the first thing to go. Oh, it's nowhere to be found. How about that? So this is, by the way, the Impulable Pass Edge right here, 26 minute mark. At this point, Cybernetic Pony has no base, no mech. He's got nothing, no real assets other than the... Other than this Lancer and these resource processors, he has nothing. Oh, and a marine. He does a marine over to the south. He can rebuild a factory. Actually, rebuilding an armory, a bit safer, but rebuilding a factory... There we go, that's what he wants. A bit faster that way. Armory would be a bit safer, because you could get more marines and spread them around the map and just almost hyper-expand, really. At this stage in the game, he could get away with that. Maybe. Well, actually, he couldn't really get away with that, but God might not find it in time. He might actually pull it off. However, he is going for factory, which would be faster for getting his mech, for getting his chronoporter gate, for chronoporting nothing. Well, he'll probably build more some Tornads and maybe tanks, build some other units in the meantime to Chronoport with. But yeah, he's going to need to do that. And getting an armory, there we go, getting the 
armory for the additional marines. I don't know if Cybernetic Pony is going to expand around the map freely. I think it's a good idea. I don't think that God expects that, though. It's more a matter of if God does find it, it's dead. God can just chronoport back and deal with it. Do I about the 27 minute mark or 28 minute mark? Cybernetic Pony is double checking this attack, and God not actually dealing with this harassment. He is instead just. Well, he probably is dealing with the harassment in the Implable Pass, sending some units back to defend against this to just uppercut this and stop it from happening completely. And this is actually... Oh, going really well for Summoner 8 Pony. It looks like enough mechs were built, enough units were built to defend against the Sebipods coming in, and the Chronoports did not pan out. Checking the timeline. Yes, it looks like a bunch of the Chronoport arrivals did not come through. I guess a, some of the... I guess one of the Sebipods got killed, and then from there it just propagated that Sebipod not Chronoporting, and it had itself chronoported over twice. So it looks like Cybernetic Pony will defend that existing chronoporter, so he's in a better position this time around. And he of course still has this southeast base and enough money to support both chronoporter and teleporter as well here, so Cybernetic Pony starting to pull up. He's getting out of the stall and is getting back at least a level flight. He might not be able to pull up out of God's lead, but he's at least getting himself a bit more even. Now, of course, if he takes advantage of this and uppercuts effectively, that will be where we see the game really turn around. But it's going to be tough. Because God still has Chronoporting as a, basically a free action anywhere on the map. He has enough Q-Plasma for it. He has the Chronergy for it a bit later. And he's probably still going for the Permaclone. I don't think he's going to succeed. This is a departure, not an arrival. But he is going for it. He's definitely trying to make sure he gets that Permaclone going. But he doesn't appear to have succeeded at any point. He's thus far got no successful Permacloning. And he also has his main base completely empty. While Cybernetic Pony having expanded quite effectively across the entire east side of the map, other than this south base right here, he's really healthy. He's doing quite well. Now, of course, he still has to worry about God coming back in the past and doing uppercuts against him, which is dealing some damage. So this Chronoporter Gate here and everything is not the most secure, though. Cybernetic Pony at the 29 minute mark should stop the defenses for it. God actually moving that Octopod that we saw. We see at the 32 minute mark there's an Octopod attacking, but that Octopod is... Oh, I can't select it between times. That Octopod is going to be moving back, so there's not any real damage being dealt. God just preparing. It looks like he's going for a really massive uppercut to try to finish off this base. Not sure if he's aware of this southeast base. I don't think he is. Macrofab being built up. Okay, this is the turnaround point, if any. It depends what units he builds. Frigates would be favorite, given the amount of error being built up. A bunch of frigates would probably win in the game here. Tornads are a lot... Actually, TSS coming in. Very nice move there. I should have seen specials being built up. But that's a very nice move because, well, a pretty nice move. The city pod is the shield breaker nonetheless, so the city pod could stop it. But it's not quite doing so yet, and it looks like, jumping back to the Impelable Pass, we do see that there was an uppercut that didn't actually pan out. But this Chronoporter <laughs> actually TSSing itself, interestingly enough. But the shield being broken, the Tornado having that shield broken, but then Chronoporting back to help deal with this help its past self to deal with the attack coming in. It looks like the attack is coming in once again in force. Hard to say what will happen, God. Further in the past 33 minute mark does have one of the shields broken, but it's... Well, that's what we saw before. However, the Tornado not being successfully chronoported, and the Chronoport of Gate losing its shield as well this time around. And back to 28 minute mark, the same units being chronoported back to support themselves. But jumping forward out of that, we don't get to see what's going on in the Impelable Past Edge. However, it looks like something with Chronoport back. Tornad ultimately getting Chronoported back. Cybernetic Pony able to get that Chronoporting going. Successfully doing that. The South has no Chronoporting happening yet. No units being built, actually. Cybernetic Pony not at all focused on that. Doesn't have the Chronergy to split his attention that well between the two bases. If he's able... No, he doesn't have the energy in the Chronoporter to TSS that. But he can Chronoport back to Tornad and use that to better defend. So this attack ultimately being fended off by Cybernetic Pony. Uppercut defenses... Surprisingly, not involving in a paradox. That's actually quite surprising, but unfortunately, one of the pre chronoportees is being destroyed before it gets to chronoport. This might turn around to God's favor. Another pre chronoportee, actually, it's TSS. Never mind. So it's not going to be a problem. But that shield break being a problem, that chrono that turn out not being chronoported back. I think Cybernetic Pony is going to lose this. Ultimately, God's going to win, breaking that feedback loop and destroying Cybernetic Pony's base here. Cybernetic Pony at the 32 minute mark has no tornads to the north. He has lost that well-fought battle. Very nice use of the uppercutting, but not quite enough. Ultimately, losing the pre-corona fortis and losing that fight. Frigates, however, being built. Cybernetic Pony will be building up 
Wainies, Spriggs, and Tornads. A nice mix. I would think Heavy Cruisers as a tank not, might not be a bad idea, but it'd also be expensive, so I wouldn't recommend it. Frigates are the better idea here. However, not enough Q-Plasma to really support a massive amount of Chrono Porting. More RPs being built towards the south, and God just coming down in this base very hard like Vulture. Well, not really. The Seppies are doing what they can. I guess he's expecting more Tornados to come out, and the Seppies would stop them, but there aren't any. Now, God back at the 29 minute mark, very edge of the of the mutable past at all. Looks like he is trying to start chronoporting again, or at least chronoporting back to Seppies a bit. And he does have a larger army from looks like some chronoporting. He does have his army doubled, not permaclone, just doubled from chronoporting. He might be trying to do a permaclone from here, and it looks like he is in fact trying to do that. I'm guessing this is undone, and then getting redone. And yes, a permaclone is going to be successful because that arrival. That departure is undone, the rival will fall off the timeline, so these units are successfully permacloned, and the attack is coming into the base. Cybernetic Pony is making his last stand right now, the 34 minute mark, and... Actually, jumping back to 34.09, or sorry, 34.30 mark, jumping back 20 seconds. And Cybernetic Pony moving his frigates forward to attack. Not the best idea, he should have kept them further in the base, because he could have, well, actually had more frigates to work with, that's the thing, he has more units there in the first place. But he is Chrono pointing back his frigates. Unfortunately, accidentally chrono fragging one of them. That's a big mistake. That actually that's going to cost him a great deal. But if he fixes that mistake, he should be fine. It's just well, he should be fine for that one battle. However, God is coming around the map, and he had so much money in the bank before that he's just able to tear apart everything that Cybernetic Pony has. And Cybernetic Pony didn't have a lot of money left. All he really has is the resource income he's getting now, and trying to do what he can with the Tornads, but. They went down way too... Actually, no, they teleported into Cybernetic Pony's base, but they're going to... Sorry, into God's base. Cybernetic Pony teleporting them cleverly, but not cleverly enough. The Seppi Pod... Actually, the Seppi Pod will not go down. God will have to lift up his units to get out of there, but still, going to lose his main base. Cybernetic Pony's losing his main base. God might be losing his main base. Actually, he could very well lose it. It's still threatened. But this is, I think, game. Cybernetic Pony, his secondary base going down. Still very exciting. Still nice attempt there. He just should have been building more units. Like When he was being attacked in his north base, he should have jumped towards the present and start getting up a bunch of frigates over here. Really quickly getting, getting the frigates up. And now Tornado doing a great job with Temporal Solution Shield, or Temporal Sultan Shield, I mean. And tearing what he can apart with the Seppies. But now God seems to be able to permaclone successfully and consistently, meaning that these Seppies are going down. And the Seppi Pod able to get rid of that last Tornado. Cybernetic Pony throws in the towel. And that was our game, folks. Wow. Sorry the Chrono Porting stuff got really confusing. The players were jumping around a lot, but I hope it became somewhat clear that the North, we had Cybernetic Pony trying to defend, but unfortunately losing the pre-Chrono Portees to uppercuts of gods. And that stopped that defense from happening. And over to the South, similar, actually not really a similar thing, God just having a permaclone. He managed to get his permacloning rhythm going and pulled it off. Nicely done by both players, though. Very exciting match. And that will be it for tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that. And have a good night, everybody.